Before turning to the complex system of acceptance and objection to reservations established under the Vienna Convention, let me come back for a moment on the various legal effects of reservations. And let us assume that we are dealing with a perfectly valid reservation. That is a reservation that is not prohibited by the treaty, nor a reservation that is incompatible with its object and purpose. You may remember that for the party making the reservation, the proper or intrinsic effect of that reservation is either to exclude or to modify the legal effect of certain provisions of the treaty. But what about the other parties to the multilateral treaty? What are for them the legal effect of a valid reservation? Two effects must be distinguished. First, between the reserving party and the other contracting parties, the reservation has a reciprocal effect. This means that the other contracting parties will only be bound vis-à-vis -vis the reserving party to the extent of the reservation. This rule is provided for in Article 21, paragraph 1b of the Vienna Convention. And the rule is obvious. If the reserving party considers itself not bound by a certain provision, or only bound to a certain manner, uh, in a certain manner, it is not entitled to require from the other contracting parties that they fully respect the treaty vis-à-vis -vis itself. The other parties will only be bound vis-à-vis -vis the reserving state to the same extent as it is itself bound as a result of its reservation. The reservation has a reciprocal effect. Let me take an example and illustrate this point. In a treaty between states A, B, C and D, if state A declares that it consents to the treaty except for, say, Article 42, state A is not bound by Article 42, but as a matter of reciprocity, states B, C and D are not bound to respect Article 42 vis-à-vis -vis state A. Second, between the other contracting parties, the reservation does not modify their obligations under the treaty. This is called the relative effect of, re of the reservation and it is provided for in Article 21, paragraph 2 of the Vienna Convention, which I quote, the reservation does not modify the provisions of the treaty for the other parties to the treaty inter se. To take the same example, between states B, C and D, who have not made a reservation about Article 42, Article 42 applies fully and B, C and D must respect Article 42 vis-à-vis -vis each other. As you can see, and if you add some complexity with B, C and D each having different reservations, the multilateral treaty will have to be viewed as a web of bilateral relations that are to a large extent similar, but not exactly similar. The question of the legal effect of the treaty will have to be analysed from the point of view of each contracting party in relation to every other party. In other words, the same multilateral treaty will not produce the same legal effects for each of its contracting parties. <music>